<clears throat> with number 10, the Seahawks. Here's the thing. They're 5-3. and three. Geno Smith got the fourth, high, fourth highest pass rating. Yeah. Kenneth Walker's emerged as a legit top 10 back. They hit two home runs at tackle in the draft. Um, they have a decent pass rusher. They got a good corner in the draft as well. Yeah. They have a lot of young talent. And, and historically, Pete Carroll, look, he's a college guy. I think, I think Pete is best as a college head coach. And so he feeds off that young energy, and they feed yeah. off him. And so with a young roster like this, this plays perfectly into Pete Carroll's coaching strengths. Yeah. I love Shane Waldron, the offensive coordinator there. Um, clever, clever offense. I think he deserves a lot of credit for the reason Geno Smith is not only serviceable, but fantastic. Yeah, he's year. actually getting the job done and exceeding expectations, which I don't think anybody Fourth expected. Fourth best pass rating in the league. Of I course know. he is, yeah. Nobody expected that from Geno Smith. Uh, we wrote the Seahawks off. Uh, we had them at what, 3-14 or 4-13, so. four, four yeah, something like that? I think like we that. had them as one of the like, least winning teams in the league. They have proven us dead wrong, and uh, we got Seahawks at 10. That's good. It's a good roster. Um, all right, number nine. Let's go with the Bengals. I think, again, a lot of people are going to overreact because uh, what happened on Monday is a bad matchup. Miles Garrett has been playing really, really well, and conversely, the tackles haven't been. But I think, you know, give it give it time. Um, the Bengals started a little bit slow last year. This is around the time they started to pick it up. I still love their weapons. I still love their quarterback. I think in, in spurts, they can still run the football, and the defense is very, very underrated. Now, granted, they had some injuries in the secondary um, and at linebacker last night, they'll get those guys back. Prior to last night's game, they hadn't let up a single second-half touchdown. So that's yeah. a legit defense that nobody really talks about. That's a top 10 to 15 defense, and that's a good enough defense when you have Joe Burrow on the other side. I still love their yeah. weapons. They'll get chased back. They'll be fine. I think they'll be fine. I think they will be. Um, I just want to see how Joe Burrow responds after a game like that. You know, we, I do too. We really need to see uh, what comes of it, if he can get it done without a Jamar Chase and what that's going to look like going forward. I think once uh, he is coming back, right? Within Jamar next... Chase will be back. Yeah, yeah that's okay. True. Um, then and, that and, that will be good. I, I, I'm just ex- interested to see what it, so, the difference looks like. And I mean, just look at their schedule, right? So they get the Panthers, the Bengals, uh, I'm sorry, the Panthers, the Steelers. Okay. And then they have their bye. And then Tennessee, that's going to be a tough one, but I think they're a better team. The Chiefs, that's a tough game. But then they have the Browns. The Bucks aren't a good team anymore. See, uh, they have the Patriots. That's a winnable game. So, like, they have some wins on the schedule, right? I mean, granted, you'll have the Chiefs, the Bills, I the Ravens. I think the Steelers are going to be a little rough for them, too, because that's when, about when T.J. Watt will be back. He'll be back there and just crushing Could. that offensive line. Could. But uh, overall, I do like the direction. I like Joe Burrow. The defense is underrated. I think it was a blip on Monday. More than uh, More than that would be... I guess the regular. Yeah. All right, let's go number eight, the Dolphins. Um, I don't love them off script because I think two is kind of limited, but they can run the football because it's a Mike McDaniel system, which is from Kyle Shanahan, which is power run based. Bring the linebackers up. They still have the speed threats to keep the safeties deep. The middle of the field's open. Two is plenty good enough to hit the middle of the field. Um, they go out and get an edge rusher, Bradley Chubb, at the trade deadline. It was That's a, either Monday or Tuesday. That's a fantastic trade. Yeah. Um, they give up a first, but I'm not super worried about that. Well, you got to um, bolster that defensive, that front. I mean, right. you got to go get the passer. Right, absolutely. And he is a – I'd give him a top seven to eight pass rusher in the league. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so good for the Dolphins, and like I said, clever offensively. Don't love them off script, but they, they're, they're certainly a very, very good offense. When you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, who are two of the top five receivers right now in the game, um, yeah, it's it's you're gonna you're gonna show up on this list. Yeah, I really like the Dolphins at eight. Number seven, it, it pains me, but we, you have to go Cowboys because you kind of got to respect what they've been able to do defensively and also with their run game. Tony Pollard's a mm. legit number one back. Yeah, Zeke should. Now, they won't list him as the two-back, but he should be the two-back. Pollard's a legit number one. I don't like Dak, but he's serviceable enough to lead this team to victory. I, and I, I've always said, I don't hate Dak. But I, th- I just think people say that he's closer to five than he is 12, and I think he's closer to 13 than he is five. You know, like yeah, hey. He's somewhere around the, the 10th to 13th kinda... best quarterback. That's, only, that's always been my argument. But he's plenty good enough to go win games when there's defined reads with a good defense. And nobody's arguing that point. Right, and so that's my point is when they have a really good defense, a solid running game, and Dak can steer the ship, that's a good yep. That's a good football team. Yep. It's when they ask him to do too much where it gets a little bit dicey. When they become Dak-reliant, things go out the window quickly. Yeah. All right, number six, we'll go with the Ravens. Um 
So they go out and get a linebacker. I think that'll help the defense a little bit. Lamar's still super dynamic, wins almost 80% of his games. They can still run the football. Mark Andrews is finally getting healthy. So that, that's, a good, that's a good team. Now they lose, I think, Rashad Bateman, but I'm not super worried about that. They're not a, a wide receiver dependent team anyway. Yeah. Um, Lamar's good. The defense is, is certainly serviceable. They can run the football. Andrews is getting healthy. They'll be fine. Uh, number five, we'll go with the Vikings. The, the, the amount of weapons that they have on offense is kind of ridiculous, and then they add TJ Hawkinson. Um, the fact that they have two backs that could both start on any roster um, anywhere across the league in Alexander Madison and, of course, Dalvin Cook is impressive, so they can run the football. And uh, what that's going to do is, is allow you to have defined reads for Kirk Cousins. Yeah. And when you have defined reads plus the guys on the outside that they do, right? So what they're going to do with the, the run game, they're going to bring the safeties down into the box, Everyone else is going to get a little bit tighter. You're going to leave the man-to-man on the outside. Play action fake, define reads, man-to-man, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson. That's a bag. I mean, that's that's too easy a lot of the times for Kirk Cousins, yeah. and it's and he's serviceable enough to get the ball to him. Not only with the defined reads, but when you can have a running game like that and just control the time of possession of yeah. the game and just possession your way to victories, especially when you have to go up and you're going to see like really good high-caliber teams out of the NFC like a Philadelphia. Or, I mean, let... Tom's not playing his best, or like a Tampa Bay. But right. either way, you're going to have to find a way to win the time of possession and just I'll do all the little things right so that you can win that game. I agree. I agree. All right, number uh, number four here. Let's go with the 49ers. Um, I, that win was resounding, and I think that is more indicative of how they're going to play going forward than it was than, than the Chiefs game was. Yep. I think now that McCaffrey's kind of folded into the program a little bit more now, yep. they're getting healthy on the offensive line. Um, they're getting healthy in the secondary, which is certainly needed. Um, and and again, I feel like I've said this a bunch, but Jimmy G is plenty good enough to get the ball out to the weapons when you have all that help. When you have Debo, C Mac, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. I mean, that's that's a that's a Pro Bowl roster on offense. Yeah. Oh, and you add on the other side like Bosa, Ward, Warner. I mean, the the new safety uh, something. To, uh, I don't even want to butcher it. Guy that looks like Troy Polamalu yeah. trains with Troy Polamalu from yeah. USC. Literally, Troy Polamalu is like reincarnated self. <laughs> uh, Hufunga is his last name. There yeah. it is. Um, that's a good defense. It's a good offense. Well coached. Um, good GM. I love the organization. They're they're certainly moving in the right direction. I think four feels right to me. Absolutely, and this kind of points to how bad Carolina is in their offensive line. I mean, you have C Mac who comes in there and pops in the second week now, and you haven't seen him have a game like that in how many years in Carolina? Yeah, I just think it speaks to that instability. Right. Number three, let's go with the Buffalo Bills. Now, the reason that they're not a little bit higher, granted, they are you know they're the number one team in the AFC record wise, but this isn't standings. This is you know like rankings, power rankings, right? Um, I worry about their inability to run the football. It's, I think that's a real thing. It's a real problem. That's a real problem. And I know that like you're some other teams on this list, like the Bengals haven't been running it particularly well. Um, the Dolphins at times can get a little bit pass reliant. Uh, the Chiefs don't run the football fantastic. But they're all committed to the run. They're all going to give you 20 to 25 runs a night. Buffalo will literally walk out of the field with nine carries. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, you can't abandon the run. Josh Allen can't do it all himself. And you saw the issues and the drawbacks of that in the second half of games. And you saw it in that second half of the uh, of the, the Sunday night game against against Green Bay. Well, you can't do it. I start to get worried about injuries, too, that could pop up. Because, Especially I mean, for Josh Allen. If you're overusing Josh Allen like that, you, that's not something you want to just, you know, use carelessly. You want to you pick your battles when Josh Allen has to run the football. I agree. And I agree. You don't want to leave him out there by himself. I agree. Now they do get Naeem Hines, but again, I don't think that's going to be a huge factor. All right, we'll go with uh, number two here, the Eagles. So, a lot of people, oh, why aren't they one? You know, they're undefeated. Honestly, and I'll, I'll spoil it, the Chiefs are, are one, because if you didn't think so by now, I mean, they're definitely not 11, so they're, they're <laughs> going to be one here. Um, so, it's, it's kind of easier to compare the two here. I think right now, this comes down to, on a neutral field, who would win this football game? I think Kansas City wins that football game. I think so. I think Mahomes is significantly more dynamic. I love the weapons in Philly, but I still, with Mahomes there, I like the Chiefs' weapons better. I think Juju has emerged as certainly probably the best number two target in the in the league. You could argue me to a low end one. He's been that good recently. He has been. He's fantastic in the slot. And what's interesting about him in the slot is he's too shifty. It's almost like a um, like a tight end on a safety type matchup. He's yeah. too shifty for a safety. 
or I'm sorry, he's too shifty for, yeah, like a safety or a linebacker. He's too big for a traditional, like, nickel corner. Right. Like a Mike Hilton. Like, those are nickel corners. He's too big for them. So he's got mismatches in the slot. I don't want to compare him to a Debo Samuel, but it's in this instance, it's like a right. Debo Samuel, where he's you not, don't know what to put on him. Right. He's not quite as fast, not quite as physical, but, I yeah, the mismatch yes. aspect of it. Uh, and the way Andy Reid uses him is fantastic. It's very similar to Cooper Cup and with McVay. Hide him in the slot, get him some mismatches. Um, so I, th- I think right now the Chiefs would beat the Eagles on a neutral field. And I-, I like the Eagles the way they're able to run the football. And I think that would cause a lot of problems for the Chiefs. And I don't feel strongly about it. They're, they're a close one and two. But at the end of the day, if I have a close one and two and I'm flipping a coin, I'm going to take Mahomes and Andy Reid or Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni. I'm taking Mahomes and, and Andy Reid. And I think Sirianni and Hurts are fine. They're, 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 they've been really, really good this year. But it's, it's Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. You can't argue with the, the resume of success that they have. You can't. You can't. Um, yeah. So I guess let's run back through it. So we have <clears throat> clear the throat. All right, Seattle at 10. <laughs> we'll have Cincinnati at 9. The Dolphins at 8. The Cowboys at 7. We'll have the Ravens at 6. The Vikings at 5. The 49ers at 4. The Buffalo Bills at 3. The Eagles at 2. And finally, the Kansas City Chiefs as the best team in football right now, and that rounds out our top 10 NFL teams through week 8.